there's a peace that comes from being around her that I don't get from any other person. Can just fly by the seat of his pants. I love it because I'm so not that way. So it's great to have somebody that's totally different. Well, I remember him walking up the sidewalk and he was carrying a guitar and I thought, ooh, guy with a guitar, that might be someone I might want to get to know because every young college girl loves guys with guitars and so that was my first thought. But I met her at the uh, front porch of the BSU house um, and I remember what kind of made it special was that she was doing something that was really odd. She was uh, trying to get a letter back out of the mailbox. I couldn't figure out why in the world she was trying to do that, but um, I helped her find out where the letter should go, and um, I uh, just kind of thought that I wanted to see her again, so I f when I found out that she was going on the mission trip, I told her to uh, come see me while she was, you know, sometime during the trip, and uh, that's that was how we uh, first met. Well, it was really funny because he had this really cheesy kind of pickup line, um, but I didn't know if it was a pickup line, and so... Um, because we were going on the same mission trip, and he said, well, if you're going on the D.C. mission trip, I will see you later. And that was his parting remark when we first met, and I thought, does he like me? That was special for me. And that he didn't think I was crazy for digging in the mailbox. The proposal, I had pl planned out the whole thing as far as having a picnic, because she loves those, and I had uh, planned on having it at a place called the Proposal Garden, which is at Georgia College. The proposal was uh, was really neat because I was kind of kind of suspicious, thinking that maybe today would be the day because he had gotten a haircut and he was dressed really nicely, and he wasn't wearing his hat, which I always know that something's up if he's not wearing his hat. And uh, we went there, we had dinner, and then I, I made her this whole big uh, box of teacher supplies for her, you know, student teaching, and she loved, you know, she loved it, and she went through it all looking to find the ring because that's what she was expecting. And um, I ended up, you know, having her look in the mailbox because, you know, I proposed to her where we met, you know, on the front porch of the BSU house. And so, you know, I just had one thing after another that sort of led up to the proposal, but nothing, you know, it didn't really come until the, you know, the very end. So it kind of, you know, built up to the moment. And uh, I think that's what, you know, I remember most about it. So every time we did what we did in our proposal, day pretty much everything that we went to we went on a picnic whenever the picnic was over I was looking for the ring and expecting a ring and no ring and then we went to the porch and he gave me a little box with teacher things in it and so I immediately think okay there's gonna be a ring in here and so I started digging through and there was no ring and so I guess what was so special about it was that even though I was kind of expecting it in the long run he really did surprise me. The ring was the last thing. I had it in my pocket, and I don't remember how I kept her from noticing that I had it in my pocket. I, she kept looking, she claimed she kept looking to see if I had, you know, a box in my pocket. I don't know how I kept her from seeing it, but I did, and so, you know, after she got through reading the letter that I'd put in the mailbox for her to read after she, you know, took it out, um, when she turned around, I just uh, kneeled down and asked her. Because finally, he gave me the letter, that was in the mailbox where we had first met and so it was really special because that was a way that I would have never expected so it was really neat. Honestly I'm, I'm looking forward to being married more than I am looking forward to getting married if that makes sense. As far as the future goes you know you never can tell and you never want to get you know, too far ahead but you know obviously kids are something that's probably down the road and you know getting to make a home out of the house that we have and you know it's just it good or bad, it's all stuff I'm looking forward to. Let's say many years of happy, fun, silly times because he's really great about bringing me down, not in a bad way, but when I get carried away with things and get really worried, he is able to support me and bring me down. And I guess just finally being married because we've been dating for a good little while and we've been engaged so long that it's just going to be nice to finally be Mr. and Mrs. Craver. My parents have been a really amazing set of parents for me. They um, have always been really overprotective of me because I am 
my mom's only child and my dad's baby, so they've kind of hovered a little bit, but they have been fantastic parents and always so supportive and so loving, and they have taught me about the Lord, and it's just been an amazing road to have such supportive parents and that have really prayed for my mate in the future and encouraged me to just be patient. It's been really wonderful to have that support and that encouragement through everything, through waiting on Stephen to come into my life, through getting through school. It's just been a journey together and they have been so supportive. My parents are, they're fabulous. <laughs> My parents are great folks. They, um, they've gone out of their way and sacrificed a lot to um, raise me and my brother and my sister. And um, you know, my mom, my mom is always there. You know, what what guy would be able to get anywhere in life without a you know a mom? You know, so she deserves a lot a lot of the credit for who I am. And uh, as far as my dad goes, he's you know, I couldn't have asked for a better one. So. Thank, Thank you, you, Mom, Mom and Dad. Dad.